Hey, good to see you on this Thursday. Glad you joined us. I'm Steve Greer. This is America's Voice Live for August 5th, 2021. In the headlines today, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis taking aim at President Biden for comments about the pandemic, calling out the commander in chief for all of his failed policies. The World Health Organization looking to take control of how vaccines are distributed worldwide, stopping booster shots in some countries so other nations can get more jabs. And the Centers for Disease Control, after admitting it had no power to do so, is now commandeering private property in a massive power grab away from citizens. It quite simply is unprecedented in American history. We'll get to all of that. But we begin this Thursday with action on Capitol Hill, where senators are wrapping up debate on the $1 trillion-plus infrastructure deal, aiming for a vote to end the debate coming up on Saturday. Democrats are expecting to have enough voters to move the bill forward by then. In fact, Republican senators and aides are predicting that as many as 20 Republicans could vote for the infrastructure deal once it's put forth. 17 Republicans did vote in favor last week to begin debate on the infrastructure package. The Senate voted on several amendments late last night. Final passage of this bill could come sometime on Monday. We'll keep you up to speed. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis pushing back and pushing back hard against the White House today over COVID and border policies that he says threaten the freedoms and the health of Florida citizens. Yesterday, DeSantis accused President Biden of trying to, quote, single out Florida for the rise in COVID cases and hospitalizations. when The Biden administration policies are failing the entire nation. Listen. And what has he done? He's imported more virus from around the world by having a wide open southern border. You have hundreds of thousands of people pouring across every month. And it's not just from Mexico. In fact, it's rarely from Mexico. You have over 100 different countries where people are pouring through. Not only are they letting them through, they're then farming them out all across our communities across this country, putting them on planes, putting them on buses. Do you think they're being... Uh, worried about COVID for that? Of course not. So he's facilitating. Who knows what new variants are out there? But I can tell you, whatever variants are around the world, they're coming across that southern border. And so he's not shutting down the virus. He's helping to facilitate it in our country. DeSantis went on to talk about the CDC's recommendations about children wearing masks this fall in school, saying it will be the parents' choice if their kids wear masks or they choose not to. The World Health Organization, meanwhile, is calling on countries like the U.S. and other wealthy nations to suspend COVID-19 vaccine booster shots until at least the end of September. Why, you ask? Well, the organization reportedly wants more vaccine supplies sent to underdeveloped countries in an effort to vaccinate at least 10 percent of their populations before boosters are distributed elsewhere. The idea being that those nations have at least some vaccination coverage and protection The WHO and its leaders claim that 80 percent of the world's vaccine supply has been used in high and upper middle income countries so far, and they need to share the wealth, if you will. Governor DeSantis isn't the only one fighting back against government overreach. A group of property owners now suing to block the new federal election and eviction moratorium. The Alabama and Georgia chapters of the National Association of Realtors filed a motion in federal court to stop the ban that the CDC put in place stopping evictions for people not paying rent or mortgages. The group says they are facing massive financial losses from the eviction ban and that the CDC doesn't have the power to do it at all, calling it unconstitutional. We'll have a lot more on this very hot topic coming up in just a few minutes. You'll want to see that uh, coming up. In New York, things are getting worse for Governor Andrew Cuomo, if that's even possible. As the first woman to accuse the governor of sexual harassment, Lindsay Boylan has decided now to file a lawsuit against the governor and his inner circle for allegedly attempting to smear and discredit her. And as for Chris Cuomo, the governor's brother, he has been offered a chance to take a leave of absence from CNN, but has reportedly decided not to take it. Chris Cuomo told the network that he wants to stay in his prime time slot and said he will not talk about the scandal surrounding his brother. So he's willing not to cover the news to keep his job of covering the news. Now I want to go to New York City where the CEO and founder of Stock Swoosh, Melissa Armo, is today to talk more about this. Melissa, good to have you here. Give us an idea 
Uh, what is the temperature in New York right now? What is the future for the governor? He's gone into hiding. He's gone into a bunker somewhere. We haven't seen him. We're probably not going to see him. But I, I've seen this before. They ride these things out. I look at Governor Northam in Virginia. Somehow he survived being dressed up in a Ku Klux Klan outfit and so much more. What happens here? I think that they are going to start impeachment proceedings soon, probably as early as next week. He doesn't have any more allies, even in his party. And even the unions have been out in the last 24 hours saying that they no longer support him. So I think it's a really tough road for him to hang in there. I mean, he's going to try to fight it because this is really the end of his political career. And what a way to go down. Ten years he's been governor. Uh, and they, he had even spoken about the possibility of running for president one day. This is the end of his political career if he gets impeached or if he steps down. So that's one of the reasons why he's not going to do it. He's going to go down fighting to the death. What about the mainstream media? They had a love affair with this guy that was never ending for a year and a half. Cuomo sexuals, they said. They gave him an Emmy for doing his job of just doing press conferences, which was uh, laughable on his face. That's why we call him the Emmy award-winning governor here, because it's so absurd when it happened, it still is. Uh, but these these networks fawned over him. They, they fawned over him for months and months, and all of a sudden here they are going, oh, now what? It's an embarrassment for them as well, is it not? Well, I think the problem is that the media covers what they want to cover. They're not giving everyone the facts about these allegations and the investigation that the attorney general came out with in New York, Letitia James. As far as the, the COVID, at the beginning, I watched Cuomo online every day. I was listening to the press conferences. We didn't know what was going to happen. But it started to turn then when you had all of this mandates with the nursing home deaths. And then they had that big cruise ship. I don't know if you remember this. The ship that came into the port, they hardly sent anyone there. That was a total waste. There was mismanagement then later on once COVID got deep into it. And even now, today, Cuomo came out and said now he's he said there's no mandate on masks, but he's suggesting that the whole the whole state now wear masks again. There's so much mixed messaging coming from him. And I think that the problem is that he's worn out his welcome even to the people in the city and even to the people in the state that were on this side that thought that he did a good job, they're seeing that there's too much mismanagement all along the course. Right. And it's funny that he's even out today, he's even out today giving, I mean, he's even out today. I mean, he is really going to try to ride this out. Look at what happened with the nursing home death. Of course he is. Out. That, 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 they're just, this is about the sexual harassment, which, by the way, is very important. It's serious. But, I mean, nothing happened to him with the nursing home deaths. That was that important. I think, Melissa, what, what so many people are upset about, though, is that by some estimates, 25,000 seniors died in nursing homes in New York, many of which could have been avoided if not for ill-advised policies about sending sick patients into nursing homes that resulted in the deaths of many people that some say would not have occurred. But I want to stay with this uh, sexual harassment, sexual assault allegation, because Governor Cuomo is not the only one with accusations of unwanted touching. Tara Reid has claimed that President Biden touched her without her consent. In fact, she says the president sexually assaulted her in a hallway several years ago. White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki responded to questions about this accusation during a press conference. Listen to what she said, Melissa. Well, first, I would say um, the president has been clear and outspoken about the importance of women uh, being uh, respected and having their voices heard and being allowed to tell their stories and people treating them with respect. That has long been his policy, continues to be his policy. Uh, that, those were, that was heavily litigated during the campaign. I understand you're eager to come back to it, uh, but I don't have anything further other than to repeat that he has called for uh, the governor to resign. Heavily litigated. Well, I didn't remember that, and apparently Tara Reid doesn't remember it either. Asked Saki, she tweeted, that I missed the investigation and litigation. I sure did not miss the smears and attacks on my character during Joe Biden's campaign as I came forward. Was it safe to come forward? I think not. Uh, Melissa, uh, back to the double standard. Uh, Cuomo can go, but Biden, they'll circle the wagons, won't they? Well, I really am surprised that they did as thorough an investigation as, as Attorney General Letitia James did. But remember, she wants to run for governor in 2022. So there, there might have been some other reasons why they decided to pursue this. And they just had enough of backing Cuomo up. 
But as far as allegations by women, everything needs to be investigated. Nobody's guilty until they go through the process. But there are just certain things, whether it's Joe Biden, whether it is Governor Cuomo, there's just certain things that are just not professional. Uh, these people in power think they can get away with this type of behavior. You don't touch someone unwanted, specifically if they are, uh, if they work for you. And and it's just all of these things are just not not professional conduct. If you're right. in an office, you wouldn't get away with that. Why would you get away with that just because you're the president of the United States or senator or the governor? Yeah, what's remarkable, though, is Democrats have demonstrated in the past, like we said, Governor Northam in Virginia, uh, Mayor Marion Barry in D.C. You can be accused of bad things. You can be convicted of crimes. If Cuomo wins the primary, if he decides to run again, he can be reelected. That's the crazy thing. Melissa, we'll leave it there. I greatly appreciate your contribution here today. All right, still to come, we'll be joined by the lead attorney for the Great Lakes Justice Center, David Coleman, to discuss the massive CDC power grab. That and more coming up on this Thursday on America's Voice Live. <laughs> 